Steve Wallbach, your friendly public adjuster. Today I wanted to talk to you about a, a topic that a lot of people ask me about when I tell them uh, about what a public adjuster is, how a public adjuster can help them, why they should have a public adjuster, all that bit. When we have a conversation about uh, filing a claim, um, so often I get asked, won't this adversely affect me where they are going to raise my rates if I file a claim? And you, there is not any one clear answer to this. Um, have I had people, uh, clients, where they've had their rates raised? Absolutely, yes. Have I had some clients where their rates have not been raised? Absolutely. Have I had people that have never raised, I'm sorry, filed a claim and had their rates raised? Absolutely. So what's the answer? Well, there isn't really one. It can be all of the above. It's a situation where it's not, there's nothing automatic. A lot of people are under that impression. And I know when you deal with um, automobile insurance, you have the situation that you get into an accident, Sure enough, you know, the insurance company pays, the car gets fixed, and then for the next three years, you're paying this exorbitant amount because what they're doing is they're getting paid back what they've paid you in that lump sum only spread out over three years. Well, I, that's not very fair, is it? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but, but that's not how homeowner's insurance works. And, and let's face it, let, let, let me give you some facts it is illegal for the insurance company to single you out because you've just filed a claim and to hit you with an increase. <coughs> just because you, you had suffered a loss, you had damage, right? And you filed a claim and they go and pay on it. For them to turn around and then just all of a sudden raise your rate, that is not to happen. That's illegal. Now, does it happen? Absolutely every single day doesn't mean it right doesn't mean it's legal you know something else that happens too if you want to deal with uh what happens contractors roofers and not all roofers okay so let's let's not get all out of hand here oh he's striking out at roofers no i'm not but what i am saying is that that profession the, there are certain individuals in the contracting roofing profession where the, what they'll do is somebody has a leak on their roof. So what do they do? They, they, you know, they get called out. They come over. They look, make an assessment. They take a look at things. And they tell the homeowner, I'll tell you what. Let me deal with the insurance company. I will accept whatever the insurance company decides that they'll pay for the, the, the roof. And all you need to do is pay me the deductible. So they just, through a verbal contract with you, told you that they're going to be representing you for this claim. Not a good situation. The insurance companies know that that roofer, unless he has a public adjuster's license, and the majority of them have a roofer's license, but that has absolutely nothing to do with a public adjuster's license. He's not in a position to negotiate and to uh, discuss this back and forth, talk about the policy and interpret it where it would give you a, uh, a final ruling where they would be paying you on it. Not qualified, illegal to do. It happens every single day. Insurance companies do this because they know that the roofer his main objective, and I don't fault him for it, is he wants to be able to put a new roof on for you. That's, that's his, his expertise. His specialty is doing roofs. That's fine. He does not know the, your policy. He does not know how to interpret and to utilize the policy to the advantage in, during the claim process. All he does is, you know, he, he may give his estimate to the insurance company. Here's what I see that needs to be done. You know, we, we're, we I suggest we put a whole new roof on. It's going to be cost this much. And the insurance company goes, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll go along with that. And that's it. 
What's bad about that? Well, I don't want to get into all that now. Let, let me backtrack. I just wanted to show the, the practices of the insurance company where they do things that are not legal, are not ethical, but yet they do this of everyday common practice. They know that that roofer is not going to be able to represent the claim to its fullest utilizing the different conditions that are within the policy. So sure, they'll talk to him because it's going to be limited to what they're going to have to pay out. Almost 100% of the time, when they pay the roofer in this type of situation, as opposed to a public adjuster, it's going to be less. So what do you think, guys? Of course it makes sense that let's not uh, get let, let's just get this over with. Hey, we send the check, the roofer goes and gets paid, you go and pay the deductible to the roofer, and it it's all done. The homeowner, as far as they're concerned, well, that's it, the claim's over, there's no other action I have, and uh, I've got a new roof. But if there was other things that have taken place, other damage during that time, it doesn't get addressed. There's no compensation for it to repair it, replace it. So guys, the, the, the bottom line as we wind this up is the fact is that will you get hit with an increase? I don't know. The point is, if you've had a loss, if you have insurance, you've been paying for the insurance, doesn't it make sense to get the benefit of paying for the insurance? That's what I want to convey to you today. And the debate, the, bay, the, bay, the way to maximize the benefit of your policy is to have somebody that knows exactly what the policy says, knows exactly what you are able to have paid on because the policy covers you for this, 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 and this. You yourself, the, the typical homeowner, is not savvy enough, does not have the training to be able to interpret the policy and to represent it against the insurance company. That's why there's public adjusters. So guys, in the future, if you have a situation, call us out. You know, every time I go out, I am not writing a claim. There are times where I'll look at the damage, I look at the policy, and when I see the coverage, the level of the policy, maybe the deductible is extremely high, and the extent of the loss is such that it does not make sense to file. And I advise you not to file. Just bite the bullet and just go and, and take care of this on your own. You're not going to get anything worthwhile going through the aggravation. My job is to help you. I am an advocate to the homeowner. I am there to advise you. Sometimes my advising, my advice is don't do it. Sometimes it is. If I do think that this is the, the proper direction to go, my keep in mind, my decision is not based on what benefits me. My decision is what's benefiting you. You're the person that I'm trying to satisfy, that I want to um, be able to perform for and provide the service to. And hopefully you would acknowledge and see that it is such a valuable service, you will refer me to other people. That's where I come from. This is not about me. It's about what I can do for you. Guys, I hope that that makes some sense. I, I, I would ask that you would share this with others. First, would you give me one of these, right? Please. You may know somebody that will fit right into this right now that needs to hear this, that's going back and forth. Do I file? Don't I file? <laughs> this might be the thing that will help them to make a decision. Please share this. And would you, of course, subscribe to my page? I uh, appreciate uh, my channel, whatever it is. Uh, please subscribe. I guess it's my channel, isn't it? Thank you very much for listening. And God bless you.